Oh Lord Jesus, how difficult this gospel is. And look at this gospel, how current it is, how contemporary when it talks about difficulties, problems in, in marriage, when it talks about divorce. This gospel is radical. I don't know if you are all married. I don't want to overlook anyone. But I also don't want to judge you. I am not here to judge you. I will only say what Jesus says and what I believe. You know, I have I have this kind of thinking now about myself. Dude, what you might know about marriage, about problems, about such everyday problems in marriage, I don't experience it personally. But it's not like that I don't know anything about it. You know, from the point of view of civil law, a woman and man can divorce and remarry because marriage is only a contract between women and men. From the point of view of our conscience before God, standing before God, men and women are inseparable from each other. They vow to themselves love, fidelity, and marital honesty, and that I will not leave you until I die. Do you remember that? Do you remember those words? Till death. And many people have a deep grudge against the church. They say that the church is backward, uh, that it is too traditional, that it doesn't follow the progress of time, and that it doesn't make life easier for people. But listen, was the church established by Jesus to make people's life easier? or whether it was established to promote and, and defend the most important values available to man. What do you think? Let us not consider the church as an institution. In the world, if the word uh, speaks world speaks, you can kill uh, children, you can kill adults, you, cannot, you, you can commit adultery with anyone whenever and how you want. You can choose what kind of person you want to be. Church will always say, don't kill, don't commit adultery, be real be yourself. And Jesus, don't speak. I will lead you, my friends, 
on an easy and comfortable way. You know it well. The way is steep and difficult. Goes through the narrow gate, full of quarrels, disputes with the wife, husband, feelings of loneliness in marriage, misunderstanding, betrayals, violence, God will never, never take the difficulties out of your way, but he will help you overcome them if you cooperate with him. You know, the sacrament of marriage only applies of, uh, to Christians, but the church didn't invent the sacrament and marriage. This is God's law. We don't have the authority to change his laws. But however, we have a duty to defend them. I know that what I'm saying is difficult for all of us. I feel this because we know how difficult the world is today. But you know, demanding a divorce from the church prevents that people don't understand what the sacrament of marriage is in God's plans. We all know that there are many factors that threaten family life and marriage today. There are many temptations that tempt our hearts. Selfish pursuit of pleasure, career jealousy, distrust, misplaced love, sexual freedom, fear of being with someone permanently, permanently, fear of taking responsibility for your own life and the life of another person. These are just some, some of forces that destroyed family and marriage. You know, I, I come across many examples of marriage. I met very joyful ones who have several children and still have everyday problems. I met also those in which love has died, died out, and people have started looking for their own happiness. Not the common one, but the, the, their own happiness. I also met such marriages where the husband leaves the wife or the wife leaves the husband because they met someone else. I also met such marriages where the husband or wife abuses mentally and physically and the children suffer. And those who have divorced in their history know how, how much it, it, it has cost them effort and suffering. And you know, a question comes. Father, my husband beats me. He abuses me. My wife is cheating on me. We don't get along. We don't feel the love that used to be. We give up, Father. It's time to get a divorce. 
And then what? What, what to say to such a person? You're right, it didn't work out, so try someone else. What about marriage? Is it allowed to send a wife away? What, what, what does Jesus say? Jesus reminds us to, of <clears throat> the beginning of creation and that marriage and the family are God's plan. They are in God's heart. And there is no place for a fix, fixed term love until I, I, I get bored. What does it mean? Sacrament of marriage is not the kind of contract you make between people, but it's such much deeper than that. It's not a contract. You give it to me and I will give it to you. God himself is involved in marriage because God is relationship. God is love. He is a community of person, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this love pulses between these persons. This is the nature of God. And marriage is supposed to reflect this relationship. A marriage is not two people living side by side. A marriage is a woman and a man living in communion. You know, in the original uh, text in, in Greek, in the Gospel, we can read the word which means husband will stick to wife will stick to why he will be in deep spiritual emotional and existential and physical unity with wife and now looking at marriage like this like that look at what divorce is divorce is a rib Divorce is disjunct of what is one. And of course, it also happens that the church admits that the marriage is not valid for several reasons. One of them is the psycho psychological immaturity. immaturity. Uh, of one or both parties. The unwillingness of having children, being forced into a relationship, and others. And finally, let me know, let, let, let me tell you, Jesus uses the, the Greek word sclerocardion, sclerocardion, sounds like a me medical term meaning hardening of the heart, hardening of the heart in a spiritual and moral sense. So this heart becomes deaf to God's suggestions, God's plan for our lives, God's dreams for us in marriage. We want to do it our way, according to our will. The relationship with whom I want for a certain period of time, until I get bored, until it ceases to be fun, and then we go on each one our own way. So if you cooperate with your husband, with your wife, you listen to one another. If you invite Jesus into your, your life, you will not be threatened 
with hardness of heart. And of course, you will have various problems, but the foundation of this marriage will be Jesus. And based on him, you solve various problems. Enough for today. Thank you.